Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. This is a Ruger Security 6 and I'm going to show you how to take it apart and put two springs in that will lighten up the trigger. This one I already put in but I'm going to show you and this one I haven't put in yet. This is the trigger spring and this is the hammer spring. I went off on a wild goose chase. I thought there was another spring in here, a trigger return spring, but that's on a different revolver of Ruger. There's only two springs that affect trigger pressure. So, try to keep this in frame. Here we go. Cock the hammer, make sure the gun's empty and safe. It is. That compresses this hammer spring. Put a nail or there is a special tool. It's in the grip. I'm not showing you how to take off the grip because everybody's got a different grip and it's really pretty simple so maybe if somebody needs it I, I use this hole grip which I like the original has wooden panels on both sides uh, which is not that grippy uh, but it makes it look different so anyway release so you cock the trigger you put the nail in you release the trigger uh, careful I don't stab myself and that loosens this up now there's a big groove and a little groove the big groove goes towards the front and that's important when you put it back now if you were to want to change this spring which I've already done what you do is you compress the spring down compress it this way take the nail out take the nail out lift this off the top put your new spring on put this back on compress it down stick the nail through so that's it be careful the spring doesn't go flying it'll take you a long time to find it what I do when I'm taking apart a gun is I put the, all the parts in order over on the right hand side so next the, the hammer has to come out now that this the tension is off you can just push this push that little dot there give it a little extra push this is just a, a 90 degree 90 degree tool and that makes this piece come out. I'm not going to use the right terms for all of this. I'm not a gunsmith. So all you gunsmith guys who are going to put comments on on my video, <laughs> I'm just going to delete them. <laughs> uh, unless you're nice. If you're nice and you want to add something constructive, I'll leave them on there. Otherwise, don't bother. Now this comes out. Just lift it out. I'm trying to hold this so that the camera has a good angle and that's actually making it a little hard for me to to do this come on hammer did I forget something I've got a piece of leather in here instead of for dry firing. Maybe that's in the way. There. Yeah, it was that piece of leather I had in there. Okay, so this is your hammer. There are some edges on this that you polish. I'm not going to get into that because I don't even know how to do it. I might teach myself how to do it. The hammer comes out, put it in order over on that side. Now we're going to take the trigger group out. There's a, 
a little button that you push and it's going to be really hard I, I won't be able to get a camera angle on it for you to see but it's right there and it's kind of an obvious little silver button that you push on um, I like the 90 degree tool what you do what you want to do is just push it and get this started just a little bit don't try to push it and get it all the way out just push it and get it started like pushing it I just want to get it started there okay so now you can see I, I pushed it and I pulled it down at the same time to get it started so now you can just again kind of cover it up with your hands I can't tell you exactly what springs are going to go flying just pull it out like that now here's something important that I watched a few other videos and guys showing you how to do what I'm showing you. This can fall out right here. This is the piece that rotates and stops the cylinder. So actually, this is the piece that stops the cylinder. There's another. This is the piece that rotates the cylinder and this stops the cylinder. It's called timing. Anyway, nobody showed me how to put this back together. I'm going to try to leave it in there, but if it falls out, carefully look at how it's assembled. There's nothing really holds it in except gravity. So if I put it down like this and I tapped it, it would fall out. So examine it. Examine the way it sticks up through the frame so that part of it engages these notches here. All right. I'm going to try to just leave it. There's a spring. There's a plunger and a spring there, and I want, want it to stay there. All right, so this is our trigger assembly. Pull the trigger to raise this up a little bit, and that comes right out. You just lift it out. You can put that piece in order. Now, this one on the other side, this is what rotates your cylinder. This has a plunger. If I, if I pull the trigger, you see it right there? There's a plunger there and a spring. It's not under a lot of tension, and it's kind of easy to take out. It's a little tricky to get it back in, I'll show you. So you pull this so that you've got clearance on that part of the trigger assembly. And I'm going to put my finger up. Whoa, it went. <laughs> I'm glad that happened because it shows you what could happen. Luckily, it bounced off my wall and came right back at me. There's the spring. There's the plunger. One other trick that I probably should have been doing, but I'm going to tell you about it. If you put all this stuff, excuse me, I'm coming in front of the camera here. Put all this stuff in a plastic bag like that and you can work on it while it's in a plastic bag and if anything goes flying you capture it but I don't know how good that would come out on the camera so I'm going to try without alright so that went flying and now we can pull the trigger again and take this piece right out of there without having to worry about it. So I'm putting that right next to the plunger. And those two have to go back together at the same time. Everything's in order. Now, this is the trigger spring here. 
The other spring I showed you is the hammer spring. So the tr trigger spring is held by this pin. It's, it's really a double pin. Uh, so let me get it started. Oh, by the way, there are sharp pieces on these revolvers. I cut myself when I was doing this earlier. Um, I don't even know where I cut myself, but there are sharp pieces once you start taking it apart. So trigger spring, push on that, pushing, and I could maybe get this out with my fingers, or you can use a little pair of needle nose if you wanted to. Yeah, I might have to get the needle holes. I don't know why it's... Alright, I just had it bound up. So there's your pin. Putting that over here in order. Everything's going to go back in order. Now you can lift your trigger out. There, alright. See, I have to do a little angle thing might have been someplace on here that's sharp and I went that way instead of that way probably that's where I did it all right so here we are here's the new spring I'm gonna go in whoops I'm gonna go in that way and there's the old spring the old spring the original one had it's like a flat flat spring it's 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 a flat a piece of wire that's got four flats on it and then they wind it. This is a round one. It's supposed to be lighter. That's the whole point we're doing this. Now, there's another pin inside the pin. Well, that one was inside this pin. This one is like a roll pin. And I think I'm going to need a drift punch probably to get that out. Let me try just pushing at it with this. So I can tell by looking at it that the, the pressure of the string spring, the roll is pressing it that way. So I have to press down on the spring that way to release this. But it still might be a tight fit. I don't, I don't know because I've never taken this apart before. Let's see. Mm. And there's probably a tool to do this, which I don't have. There, I moved it a little bit. You can see I moved it a little bit. I'm going to, uh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go off camera right now because this might take a long time. Okay, I'm back. As I said, you're going to need a, like a punch or drift pin. And you're going to push it, push the pin in to get this roll pin out. I don't know if it's a roll pin or... No, I guess it's not a roll pin. But anyway, it's a little pin with a hole in it to get that out. Now I can get... I can release the tension. See, there's still tension on this trigger spring and put the new one in. And this could go flying too. Maybe I'll put it in a bag just to show you how the bag works. You know what I'm going to do. So even if you can't see it on the camera that well. There. Okay? Try, trying to show you. I'm just going to extract the punch. Whoa, yeah, that had a lot of tension on it. And uh, I'm glad I put it in the bag. So there. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's like a squared off wire that's rolled into a 
spring, a trigger spring. So the new one looks like it'll go in a little easier maybe because it won't have as much tension on it. That one's got a lot of tension on it. So I am going to put this over in my parts list, but I know it's not going to go back in. And I'm going to put my pin with a hole in it over there too, in order. And now I'm going to get this in. It's got a long, this, this is where the long leg of the spring goes, and that's where the short leg of the spring goes. It's, it's kind of obvious. Long leg and short leg. And you're going to have to lay it in there, press it down. I'm going to go into the bag again, but I'm going to show you before I go into the bag, just in case. In case you can't see through the plastic. I'm going to press this down and get my drift pin through there, and then I'll replace the drift pin with the real pin. All right, so I'm going to go in the bag. I'm going to stop the camera for a second to like get this technique perfected. Okay, I'm back. So I went off camera to uh, figure this out. Remember, guys and gals, this is the first time I ever did this. And what I, I came up with, first I tried using this, it's called a bench block for gunsmithing, but it did not have any slot or hole or anything that I could use, so I made out of a piece of wood, I just carved a channel in it so that I could shove the trigger down there and that would take the place of one or two of my hands and hold it in place so that I could push down on the trigger spring thereby compressing and spreading the legs if you follow me and then get my drift through there. That's like stage one. Now I've got to replace the drift with the little roll pin. That's stage two. And then that's the hard part, I guess. So if you're wondering why I didn't just stick it in a vise, well, I didn't really have a camera set up for that. And here, at least I've got a, a rag so that I can catch the spring when it goes flying. If I move it over to where my vise is located, it'll get buried amongst all my uh, collection of garage things. So I made this little block. It seemed to work pretty good, so I may actually make a nicer one now that I've got this one that I just hacked out with saws and drills and whatever. Um, so I shoved down. Here, here's the technique, there, and there is technique to this. You want to get the short, the short leg kind of as far back as you can, and then as you compress and lower the coils of the spring, the short leg kind of stays in place and the long leg sticks out this part of the trigger and this goes down. So try it that way. That was what worked for me anyway. I am going to go off camera again and try and figure out the uh, pin, the roll pin. And when I do, I'll come back and show it to you. It gets kind of boring if you just watch me learn. Well, let me get you lined up there. That went a heck of a lot easier. Oh, that's nice. Focus is nice. That went a lot easier than... Uh... Whoop. I got one of these headlamp things. I, I like them a lot. But get a bright one. Get one that's like 10,000 lumens. Don't get the little bitty ones that are two or 300 lumens. So, I kind of worked it with one pin pushing, one, one pushing down to get this half aligned and the other one pushing the roll pin along. So, that worked. I think I found what I cut myself on. This is like a razor here. 
that's your that's the the final place that holds the hammer back again you gunsmith guys can tell me the name of it before it releases Whew, it's sharp so got that in now um, actually erase all that this this is the sharp end right here that that one's not so sharp this is the one that's like a razor Um, yeah, because it makes sense because the hammer's back here. So, moving right along, I know I get bogged down and wordy, sorry. We can start putting this back together. So we have a Wolf supposedly reduced power spring in there, lighten up the trigger. I think that'll probably work. We'll see. And uh, let me just get myself reorganized and then we'll put it back together okay so you know you can fast forward anyway if I get if I go off on a tangent I'll just fast forward go back and forth till you find what you need so let's make this an assembly here's the trigger here's the trigger guard drop it in there put your pin back I'm not doing any lubrication I'm not doing any polishing. That's for another uh, another video. This is just putting in the two springs. All right, so that's in there. Feels good. And, ah, okay. This one's a little tricky. This is the this is the part that moves your cylinder around, and this has a spring and a plunger on it. So. All right, the spring and the plunger go right there. Oh, come on. Okay, and this is not a lot of tension, but it still could go flying. You remember it, it did go flying when I... So, get this started like that. Just get it started a little bit. And then we're going to have to push the plunger down and push this that way. Let's see. I'm using different fingers here. Maybe I'll use my block again. I know you guys are not getting a good view sometimes. I'm sorry about that. All right, I think this will work. I'm going to press press with this finger and take a, take my little well, actually I think I'll use this punch here and press down on the plunger at, at the same time. And if it goes flying, whoop, it should go right in my face. All right? There. Come on. Okay, I got it. I think I got it. Uh, it's going to go in a little bit more. Ah, oh, damn it. I got to go looking for it. Hold on. I think it didn't go far. Okay, I found it. And luckily, uh, they stayed attached. The plunger is attached to the spring. There, let's try this again. There. Like that. Switch hands. Get that started.
No, it's not staying in there very good. Stay. Oh, I know. All right. Let, let it drop down a little bit. See, gravity wants it to drop down, and that's okay. So I'm going to try this. Pressing. There. Okay. I shoved it all the way over this time. So now, now it's working. Okay. Whew. Moving right along. Next piece. Easy. Let's pull the trigger back a little bit. Drop it in the hole. All right. And this will locate itself when you shove the trigger group back in. This one you have to make sure it kind of goes in the right place. Now remember what I told you. If this wasn't getting so long, I'd show you. But this, this has a spring right there. Like a plunge, another sort of a plunger and a spring behind it. And this has to stick up, and that's what locks the cylinder. That one over there turns it, this one locks it. And it stayed up there, so I'm just going to leave it alone. But if it falls out, put your plunger piece back. You can tell it only goes one way. It's got the spring behind it. Make sure this piece goes in with just that little tip sticking up into this part of the cylinder. Okay? Now... There we go. Now this has got a lip here. You gotta catch the lip. Keep that more or less pointed up. There. Catch the lip. Now you get it up about so far and then you have to compress this little piece here so it'll go the rest of the way. And you have to make sure that I wish I knew the name of it. Oh, that thing that slides up and down in, in front of the firing pin or in back of the firing pin. You're going to make sure that's going in the right location. So, oh, see it fell out. Make sure the front part is located right. And again, I'm making this look hard because I'm trying to put it on an angle that will help you guys and gals see it. If I was just doing it without camera, I'd have a different angle. There. Okay, once once you get that spring loaded, it's like a pointy thing. Once you get it compressed, then it should go right in. As long as this is not falling out of position, and as long as that slidey thing there is right. So what else? We haven't got our hammer in yet. You can see it slides up and down like that. So, drop the hammer down. Now remember, this, this, this goes easy because there's no load on it from the spring. It should go easy. Watch, I jinxed myself. You might have to pull the trigger back. There. I pull the trigger back a little bit. Get that hole lined up. And this piece goes back, drops right in that carved out piece of the receiver. All right. Spring. Remember, I showed you how to replace this spring, more or less. It's got a big, big side and a little side. Make sure they go in the right place. I think I got off camera there. Sorry.
hammer probably has to be all the way forward here. Not sure why it's not going forward. I may have got something in the wrong place. Hold on. Let me check. I'll be back. Okay, I figured out what I did wrong. When, when you drop the hammer in to put this pin through, you, you have to have the trigger all the way back, then drop the hammer in. If you have the trigger forward, there's something in there that doesn't line up right. I don't know what it is. Post it. You gunsmith guys, post it, please. All right, big side. So this goes up here. And it sits down like that. Whoop, pull the trigger back. Drop your nail out. All right, test. Uh, I like to put a piece of leather in there. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but just, you know, it's poor man's snap caps, right? There. Single action. I'm going to measure this. You know, I've been working. My hands are all beat up, so I don't trust. I don't trust myself to say this is a lighter pull or not. Okay, got it back together. Whew! And that was first time. Mistakes and all. So I am not a gunsmith. But I think I pointed out a couple of little things that other guys, like this part here that can get out of position, and how to actually get the spring seated in there, things like that. Give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. And probably be uh, mostly it's automotive but there'll be a little more gun stuff because uh, my buddy and i are going to start doing some three gun shooting okay see you froggy out bye bye you know how to do the handles the handles are easy there's lots of stuff on the on the youtube about handles